right, let's do it. It's Windows Phone Radio, episode number 13. Ba, ba, ba. Woo! Starring your host, Matt Akers, program manager on the Zoom software client, and my awesome co-host across from me is... Brian Seitz and the Windows Phone marketing team. Yes, sir. Uh, back after a brief hiatus, eh? Yeah, awesome. it was actually, it was fairly extended, I would say. It, it was. was. Wow, there was holidays, there was, you know, things going on. I mean, you know, we had a uh, jet-setting lifestyle that we have to maintain. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, I don't carry a microphone with me in all those jet-setting settings that I'm in. You know what I'm saying? There is a voice recorder in the OneNote we app need... on your phone, though. So is you... there? Yeah, I mean, you could I just... I didn't know that. You didn't? Oh, that's cool, no. I'm teaching you stuff. Man. Wow, see there, kids? Look at that. We're already, we're already dishing out awesome tidbits and fun facts <clears throat> for you with uh, in the first uh, 30 seconds of the podcast. Well done, or 49 yeah. seconds. Yeah, all the notes that you take on OneNote, whether they're texted or spoken, are uploaded automatically to your SkyDrive account. That is cool. Mm-hmm. I did not know that. That's a really awesome tip. Mm-hmm. That's sweet. Well, we needed to break them off with some tips after such a long hiatus there. Well, it's good to be back. Uh, it's great to be back in the saddle again. Uh, we are now uh, post-CES, and we have recovered, I think, finally. I'm just now shaking my cold, despite the fact that you made me walk over in uh, pouring rain here to the studio to record. I haven't uh, been outside yet today, so I didn't know it was raining. Yeah, it's not nice out. It really isn't. Well, we're, uh, we're redoing this because we did it earlier in the week, as you, as the, as, you know, as the fans probably know, because we asked you for questions on, right. on Tuesday, I think. But yes. Matt sounded horrible then, so this is better. Yes. He's much more sprightly. I did sound. He was, you, were, you weren't looking good. I was dying. I literally was. <laughs> I was like a post CES zombie, literally. Do you ever get that though? I mean, after you do some sort of event like that, I mean, CES is like the coup de gras, right? Though, I mean, that's the one where you know you're going big every night. You're on the floor all day. You're talking to thousands of people. It's super exciting. You got to be jazzed the entire time, uh, which is easy for me. But well, still. and you're you know brushing against and shaking hands with 175,000 people from all over the world. Yes, and um, whatever it is they have at the moment. Not all of which are wearing masks. Which <laughs> right. some were, some, some were. Uh, yeah. I probably should have been because the funny thing was is literally the day before I. I flew out, um, I caught a cold, and so I was trying to fight that uh, with a mixture of uh, Tussin, cough medicine, fun, and games, and it just did not work. You cannot, uh, there wasn't enough Tussin in the world to kick that, so I'm just now getting over it. It's good stuff. Um, But we had a great time. We neglected to record, uh, which is kind of funny. We did, but we were... Giving the bird to the man. We were. everyone does that. That's right. Now, I thought about that, and I was like, you know what? We don't need to do a gratuitous CES podcast. I mean, it was podcast overload from CES, right? So I feel like we did you guys a favor by giving you a break from what everyone else does, because we're just different like that. And lazy. And lazy, perhaps. I just think I just don't think we could find the little recorder thing. And at the party we had on Thursday night to celebrate Windows Phone, um, I just don't think it would have been a good idea to record. Probably wasn't appropriate. No, but you know the bummer is is that I brought all the gear. You know, which was you know, did you cart all that down there? Yeah, in like in your big case. In my big case. Oh thing. man, that's twice we've done that, <laughs> yeah. and then we end up going, well, let's do it when we get back. Yeah, that's great. No, but uh, but actually, let's talk about that party. Great times at the Windows Phone uh, gathering. It was awesome. Uh, we had a wonderful suite at the Palms, uh, hosted by uh, our buddy Dave. Dave Mack, Dave McLaughlin, uh, who helped us uh, secure that, and it was just great. Uh, DJ Gigahertz was on the ones and twos. We had lots of great guests. Uh, we actually had phones on display. I was really proud of you for that. I didn't expect that, yeah, but you really came nice out Nice touch, there. huh? It was a nice touch. It was great. Um, but no, it was nice. I mean, we had folks from all over the place. We had, uh, you know, Jason Dunn come down from uh, Canada to hang out with us. We had... Great White North. The Great White North, right. Our Mountie with many thoughts about many things. Uh, <laughs> Graham Ski was there from uh, anythingbutipod.com fame. We've got, uh, we had Ian Turk from the Microsoft Store representing. Our buddy William Devereaux, who's yeah. our uh, hopefully soon to be MVP of some sort of uh, some product here at Microsoft. That's my goal this year. Hook him up. He's a great guy. Yeah, and, very uh, good behavior. He, very good behavior, though I think we blew his mind at the party just a little. <laughs> It was good. But, uh, no, we had a great time, and uh, it was great seeing all those folks and meeting new folks. And, uh, you know, we just had a blast, and it was neat just to kind of celebrate the phone and unwind a little bit. It's cool. Yeah. Really enjoyed it. Absolutely. So, well done, sir. Thanks. You yeah, did yourself. It was very good. Though yeah. I will say, though, that that was born of a pre-podcast conversation that you and I had in uh, early or late November. I think it was. And we we're kind of like, gosh, we should do something at CES. I'm like, we must have party at CES. Yeah. And then we ran with it. It was good. It really was fun. We had, a, you know, in addition to all the fans, you know, some of the fans that were down there that could come support and they have been supporting Windows Phone. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, we also had some folks in the press that were there right. and got a chance to talk with them a little bit more and kind of a more of a casual environment, which is good because a lot of those guys are our buddies. And, That's right. Uh, so we say what's up to them, too. And thanks for coming. Um, 
But it was good times, you it know? It was good stuff. We had a lot of competition that night. There was lots of parties. There were. And, so. uh, you know, we were told, though, that ours was superior more really? than once by others who had gone to other parties and then ended up coming to ours. And word spread fast because I definitely got several texts. It's like, what's the password to get in? And I'm like, mm, who is this? And again? there was a password. And there was, which that is was, really clever. Yeah. I thought that was great. Uh, so, yeah, lots of lovely folks. Great times. Uh, and you're right. Just having that kind of, like, chill environment to chat in is just awesome and uh, and unwind a little bit. It was great. Uh, but being on the show floor, too, was really cool. So I was out there working the uh, in the trenches in the booth and uh, demoing a lot of the things I demoed uh, had to do with, uh, you know, just the media experiences on the phone because that's my area of expertise. And um, I got to tell you, it was a lot of fun having folks come in that either – you know, didn't have any idea about the phone or just had an idea and wanted to learn more. And uh, even those folks didn't really have an idea of the media offerings on the phone and didn't understand that, you know, the great uh, experience that's already built in in the phone with Zune. And uh, it was really neat to kind of walk them through my demo and take them through and then explain Zune Pass and how that works. And uh, I mean, they were sold, you know, at the end. I mean, it sells itself. Once you really get down there and demo all the great things about it, it was uh, it was just an easy sell. And, uh, and they had a blast. And I got to tell you, that booth was popping. It I was, mean, yeah, it was packed. It really was. And I can tell you this year, and I know you guys have probably seen the stats, but <clears throat> I've been to CES the last three years, and that one by far uh, felt like it had the most traffic day to day than any one that I've been to thus far. I mean, it's really, I, I think, a good sign of uh, things turning around, you know? Yeah. I, I heard that from a number of the cabbies that, that, uh, <clears throat> that I frequented in, in Los Angeles that they were glad that, or in Los Angeles, Las Vegas, that it, you know, one, you can tell kind of the state of the economy by the number of people at the airport, and the airport yep. was crushed. Oh, my it was gosh. Like ridiculous. That cab, cab line was yeah. like a Disney line nightmare. I was like, oh, my uh, gosh, is this what I'm on? But they were, very, they were very excited that things might be turning around because Las Vegas is one of those cities that's been hit pretty hard. And, right. Um, so it was good to get a little bit of, you know, positivity it was. Going there. It so. was. It really was. And uh, Keynote was great. Uh, you know, Bomber had a lot of great things to say about the phone, a lot of upcoming cool games and things. I, for one, am looking forward to the uh, Fable Coin Golf app. That looks pretty fun. Yeah. Little game action. I'm excited about that. Obviously, he talked about the, you know, the update that's coming soon, so you guys are excited. Coming soon. Copy and paste. Yay. What's funny about it? You'll probably never use it. Maybe once a week. I literally, I just, I don't ever, I think the only thing I could think of right now that I would use is either... Copying, pasting addresses or numbers or something. Yep. That's about the one thing I could think of that, uh, which some of that's built in really well that if you're, you know, if it notices an address, it's easy to, to attach that to someone in your contact list. You don't have to have that, but, you know, maybe maybe I'm just missing out on this great world of copy, pasting. Well, I, I mean, know, I think, but, you know, those, you know, that's a feature that was pumped in there to, from direct user, you know. Seriously. People feedback. I don't yep. want to call you guys users. People, you know, normal people using the phone. Yep. Or like, I'm, you know, something's missing and, um, so that's a direct result of that. And, you right. know, there are times when I bump up against it. I did last night where it will be nice right. uh, to have that cable. But I agree. It's not like um, <clears throat> it's not a huge, like, hole right now. Uh, right. You do some good stuff with, like, linking addresses and phone numbers uh, in a really smart way. Like, if you have a if you have an address in a, in a meeting request in your calendar and you click on that address, it will automatically launch the Bing app and show you where that is on the map. Right. And then you can say, show me how to get there from where I'm at right now. Yeah. And it will give you directions from, you know, using the GPS sensor to figure out how you get to where you're trying to go. So right. There was a lot of thought taken into account on, like, how we link tasks together sure. in an intelligent way, um, kind of end-to-end as opposed to really treating them as kind of separate things. Right. So. But I am proud of us, though, and you bring up the great point, though, that that – Adding that feature is, again, a direct result of your feedback. And that, you know, again, I'm proud of our company for, you know, listening to people. And and I hope you guys understand that you are being heard through avenues like Brian and I and just in general. I mean, we're all aware of the things that you're asking for, and it's great. So um, I'm pretty excited about that. I love seeing the, you know, something come from a customer's mind and have it, you know, come to fruition in the product. It's really yep. cool. There'll be some other, there'll also be some platform <clears throat> enhancements in this update to help. For example, uh, applications and games loading faster right. and resuming faster uh, if you bounce out and you know start back up. Right. So that'll be good. That'll be a nice you know treat. So there'll be uh, some other kind of performance enhancements that come along. Totally, with that which update. is awesome. And speaking of customer feedback and things, um, something that I mentioned on uh, the Zoom Insider podcast, which I want to put out here too, is that uh, you guys know I'm a program manager on the Zoom software. <clears throat> that you connect your phone to to sync your media and update your phone soon when that comes out. Um, but what I want to do is reach out to everyone and ask you, you know, what are the things, now that you've been using it for a little while, what are the things you'd improve? What would you make better? Do you have any rants? Are there things that we just flat out missed? Is there something that I can make a better experience out of? Uh, I've got the power to do that, and I want to flex that muscle. So why don't you guys hit me up at AskZoon, 
at Microsoft.com. That's the email address I'm checking for this. And uh, shoot me your feedback on the software. You know, give me a, give me your wish list. Give me your rant list. Give me your, hey, you missed this thing. Whatever it is, go shoot it over to me. And again, this is for the Zune PC software that you connect your phone into. And again, email me at askzune at Microsoft.com. We'll go ahead and put that in the blog post description when we post this up so you guys know. But feel free to hit me up. I just really want to do is aggregate a list from real people out there of what you guys want. What do you want us to do to improve so that I can take that back to the team and get that integrated into the product. So, uh, so do that for me so I can help you. Help me help you because I'm reaching out for you. So, uh, And I did post that on Twitter, I believe, last night, kind of asking for that. But I also wanted to put that out to this audience as well because, you know, you do use that software maybe daily for your phone. And uh, I want to do what I can to make that the best experience possible. So hit me up. Ask Zoom at Microsoft.com. I'll collate my list. I'll take it to the big dogs and I'll make it happen. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I know, I know that from the questions that we put out earlier in the week, there was definitely lots of feedback around Zoom um, on the software, but also the experience on the device. Right. And we've talked about this before, but, you know, <clears throat> there are very different ways in which the kind of the Zune experience manifests itself on a phone versus the Zune HD. Right. The Zune HD being a pure play kind of media, you know, portable media player. Exactly. The phone, uh, music and video being a huge part of what it does, but also, you know, need, needing to do other things as well. So there's some little tweaks in there and, you know, continue the feedback on things that you would like to see make its way to the phone. But right. to your point earlier, like when people really get a chance to to check out the phone and not enough people have yet. I know there's, you know, a vast majority of people out there have not had a chance to get their hands on a windows phone. And so for those of you that have it, I encourage you to share it with your friends and family right. and give them a chance to check it out. Cause it is a really, I think it's a delightful experience. It's fun. It's something that I, you know, I actually like playing with when right. I'm like out and about, but the, you know, yes, I'm biased cause I worked on the zoom team and now I work on the phone team, but sure. The music experience is like second to none, and I know I've said this before, but like, come on, like Zoom right. Pass on the go on your phone, and it extends out to your Xbox, and and just the way that it looks is so much better. I mean, I'm just, you know, I'm a fan of the eye candy, and it just it just looks better. It's a better. I want to see the artist. I want to see what they look like. I want to read right. their bio. And you're not going to get that on your BlackBerry. You're right. going to get that on your Android phone. Yep. You know, you're going to get some similar stuff on your iPhone, but it's not going to look as good. Yep. So, you know, check it out if you're a music head. I mean, this is, you know, this is this is what it's all about. And, exactly. Um, and and I just love it. I love I love trolling the marketplace every Tuesday for new music. And yep. We were talking about music before we started up here, and kind of I was taking strolls down memory <laughs> lane yesterday. Uh, through my 90s hip hop collection yeah which is not a collection because I don't have to own it but I can go and like grab all that stuff and listen to it for a week and then go back to listen to stuff that's new and hot yep but, um, lots of Sally Cell lots of E-40 Sally Cell uh, you know um Rap and Forte, like. Did you, you have know. some Spice One in there? The Bomb from the Bay? Big, yeah, well, I listened to Spice One. I wasn't into him as much, but I was big into, like, the Get Low Players, pot, you know, GLP, JT, Seth the Gaffler, um, San Quinn, like, nice. all those Barry, kind of independent guys from back in the right. day. They're some solid stuff, but. That's cool. Um, what's I, your what do you what do you listen to now? So you, you went old school, but what's uh, what's what's spinning right now on that Zoom Pass? Well. I've been listening to Snoop Dogg has a Snoop Dogg presents my number one priority kind of mixtape thing where he nice. goes back and and this is actually what kind of got me started on he goes back and digs through the crates uh, from Priority Records old stuff. Oh, cool! So All right, got like EPMD, some NWA, some Master P. I was big into Master, like Master P. P's crew back yeah. in the day, and so that was good to listen to all that stuff. Bourbons um, and wax, true, you know, old Snoop stuff and. Uh, but listening to a lot of the Carrie Hilson album, which I'm really into. It's, yes. It's a good track. Um, yes, I've heard that's pe awesome. People are mixing it up in really cool ways right now. Um, Nicki Minaj's album is fabulous. Yes. Although it's probably not appropriate for listening to you around parents or your mom. No. Or, like, Maybe there's your an wife. edited I tried version. listening to – we went on a road trip to Arizona and drove the family down to – Phoenix, I tried popping that in while the girls were asleep, and it lasted about 30 seconds, and my wife was oh, over that's it. Oh, awesome. that's Yeah. You're like, not cool. Okay, bye. Not safe for Not family. safe for family. <laughs> yeah. Apologies. Uh, that's great. But that's probably, the, that's, those are probably the big ones right now. Nice. Yeah, what about you? Uh, let's see. You know, I've been trying to spin my credits. It was my date was coming up, you know, and the software will remind you up. Uh, yes, your date will update. So your that, credits will right. turn up in pink at the top right corner, so pay attention to that when that happens. A couple things you can do with that you may have not known. If you click that, we'll actually go through your collection and look at the top Zune Pass songs you've been playing over the course of the last month and then suggest those as the 10 songs you should use to spin your credits. 
Nine times out of ten is the stuff you want, right? Because you've been playing it a lot, obviously, but you've been enjoying those things. So that's a little tip for you guys. Click that little credit thing up there. We'll give you a list of suggested songs that you can easily spend your credits on. So I'm going through that. I found the uh, Deuces remix featuring Kanye and uh, Drake, as well as Andre 3000, which is pretty sweet. Chris Brown tune. It uh, came out about, I think, this summer, but uh, they just remixed it back in November. That's pretty sweet. Uh, definitely worth a credit uh, if you're doing that. Or just a download if you're just rocking the Zoom Pass without credits, which is fine, too. Um, one thing I was doing at CES was shouting a lot of Rick Ross lyrics. I don't know why. I just got it. I just got this hair, and I was listening to the song. I, when I see you, I think Rick Ross. You must, because yeah. I really exude that, uh, you know, giant gangster from the South kind of thing I got going on. Uh, but, yeah, it's uh, the song's MC Hammer, and it might be the best song ever right now. It's uh, quite yellable in uh, casinos in uh, Las Vegas, which I definitely tested the limits of and limits of those around me. So uh, it was pretty awesome. So I've been... Uh, I've been going back to hip hop a little bit lately. Now, of course, I've been wearing out the Tron Le- uh, Tron Legacy soundtrack. Just killing it. I mean, the, the <laughs> Daft Punk. Yeah, they nailed it. I mean, normally I'm not into like a musical score, right? But when it's done by Daft Punk, I mean, come on, it's uh, it's pretty awesome. So I'm pretty thrilled. Thank you for that. That's great. What'd you find there? What is this? Is that the that's website my, that has my, the... Yeah, my iDef Daft Punk soundboard. The Daft Punk always soundboard. At the always yeah. at the ready. I need to have that in meetings. So yes. if somebody says something, I'm like, better, faster, <laughs> worse. I mean, they need a worse button, I think. I don't know. But uh, yeah, that's... Pr- Holla. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. I, don't I, think I, think, I, I wanted to say that. That's what I wanted to say. But no, that's brilliant. So anyway, yeah, lots of tunes like that. But anyway, guys, get on that Zoom Pass. Try a trial if you haven't. I mean, again, like you said, for the music heads out there, it's just awesome to be able to try the old stuff. I mean, seriously, when you first get it, you will spend an entire weekend going back through your musical past and getting everything that you've ever thought of and everything you've ever listened to or ever loved and uh, start downloading that stuff. And it's just neat to see it all come to life and uh, nice high fidelity full res album art and uh, good sound. So, yeah, I mean, loving we, it. we like I said, we went on a road trip and we, you know, the, the Windows Phone 7 was at the forefront. Like, How was the Sites family it road was awesome. trip? Tell us about it. We drove to Phoenix from mm. Seattle, which is wow. about 25 hours of driving yes. each way. Which is, you know, that's a pretty good chunk of time. Yeah. But, uh, hey, we're using the phone with Bing to help us find out where to get our food. I mean, the thing with being on the phone that I love the most is the local. Yep. So, like, where am I at right now? I'm in Sacto. I have no idea where to get a taco. And um, right. and it will get you there. So, we, we use that a lot. <clears throat> um the music we would, you know, at every we, when we would stop uh, for the for the night, we stopped a couple times on the way down, but only once on the way back. But we would, you know, get the computer out, get some new music on the phone, right, uh, and to make sure that we had some good road trip music going. Um, the kids use the games, of course. Uh, my oldest is big into flowers, so she's nice, like, you know, kind of getting the little flower strategy game action going on, and and then um, and it's one of our fans. Uh, pointed this out earlier but there's some drawing games right drawing apps or whatever that 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 the kids always love so um so it was good and um yeah it sounds like the uh, windows phone helped make the sites family road trip a success yeah on the camera of course i mean of course well and in in what we were doing and this is kind of a you know sites family fail but um (laughs) I was what I wanted to do was you know my we, I use Facebook primarily to like communicate with our family and sure and so I was like you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check in at significant places right on the way through Foursquare and post those on my Facebook page right. so people know that we're okay and we're making progress so I was checking in at like the Oregon Washington border and right. uh, Mount Shasta McDonald's and, bathroom break number four <laughs> no, right yeah. like landmarks and sure. you know state lines and stuff like that well unfortunately I changed my Facebook password recently and did not update it in my four square accounts oh, so awesome. none of that stuff was making it there and I didn't Great. realize that till we had arrived which that's pretty kind funny. of a bummer but you know needless to say we were uploading photos of plenty right on the so what are your thoughts on using the uh, Facebook uh, places versus uh, four square what's up uh, I've been testing both and uh, I mean I've been using four square for a little bit not as long as I'm sure a lot of you out there have yeah. I, I think probably about a, a year um, right. but and and it's cool I like being able to, and, and we did this in Arizona a couple times you know like hey who else is at this venue um, and actually did see some people I knew and was able to connect with them, which is cool. Right, right. Um, the thing I like about the places is, is that it's um, it's tied to your Facebook friends, too. So, yep. you know, you can kind of get a view. If you can tag them too. in, right? And say, yeah, you hey, can, you're you can here tag too. them. We did that. You know, we were at this uh, uh, Taqueria in West Sacramento <clears throat> on the way down. 
you know, and tagged my wife. And then you can also upload a photo to go along with your post, which is cool. Right, so, right. Uh, and I know the recent Facebook app update on the phone actually incorporated the uh, places, places stuff. So, yeah. uh, so guys, check it out. If you're using Foursquare, maybe you should check out the places. If you're using places, check out Foursquare. You know what I mean? Let us know what's up yeah. with that. Because I dig the, both. The other app that I used uh, quite a bit over the break, too, uh, and this was an uh, showed off at CES, was the Kindle app. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Which is solid. And so, Love it. you know, I had been reading Kindle somewhere else, and you get it going on the phone. It's like, hey, last time you stopped. Right. on the other device you left off here is that what you want to take up so that went whisper sync is is sweet bookmarking is <laughs> awesome like that i really love that uh, connected bookmarking between devices i think that's gonna you know obviously take off amongst different platforms and things too but that's really cool i know i'm super stoked to have the kindle app i know we talked we had brandon watson on a while back and uh, he kind of previewed it because you know <clears> he <throat> previewed at pdc as like hey it's coming soon and you know, finally out, which is great. So uh, I'm digging that as well. I actually have a Kindle uh, with a ton of books on it. So I'm stoked to see it come here. Um, and it's kind of funny, you know, it's having this, you know, having Kindle on here now, having Zoom on here now. I don't, there's just, uh, my laptop is becoming, you know, it's getting dusty. I'm yeah. not going to lie to you. One of my New Year's resolutions, even though I don't do resolutions, has been uh, to like stop bringing like my laptop to meetings. Ah, yeah. Very nice. Because I always get that, you know, that. review time. There was like, you were, you know, working on your computer too much in meetings. I'm like, well, that's kind of what we do here. Yeah. <laughs> what is it that you do? Problem here? is there's a lot of meetings and we got to get a lot of stuff done. Right, but, right. You know, Multitasking, taking that, that feedback to heart, I'm, you know, very nice. to be more in the moment. Yeah, yeah well, you know, on. and, uh, you know, like my dad gave me a little anecdotal story over the holidays uh, to that to, to that end and uh, was that, uh, you know, he runs a coal mine out in Wyoming and, uh, you know, he's, He's the big boss out there, right? So, but when anybody comes to his office, no matter who it is, and they sit down to talk with him, he shuts his laptop, turns his monitor off, pushes his phone aside, and whatever work he's doing, if he's got papers out in front of him or whatever, he slides them aside and creates a clear path between him and the person that's sitting at his desk and gives him his full undivided attention. I think that's cool. And he said that back when he was, uh, when he very start, first started out in the workforce, that the CEO of his company had to sit down and propose, you know, something to him or whatever. He sat down with him and he did that. You know, he sat everything off to the side and then focused on my dad. My dad was like, you know, that really, you know, gave me a lasting impression. And so for that point forward, no matter what job he's ever had, he's always done that. So I'm going to try to do more of that because I've noticed some people will come to my office. I'm doing this, like I'm talking to him and I'm clicking my mouse and I'm looking, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm giving them look over my shoulder as I'm doing other things and not really paying attention. And I can tell that that's not uh, the most respectful that Matt could be. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to. Well, you know, they, they, if you look at the like the, the marketing campaign that we came out with around launch, it was kind of that same idea. Oh, it's very much that. And, you know, hate it or love it, <clears throat> you know, the phone does, the, the, the work that was done with the kind of the design of the phone, the idea was like, hey, there's a bunch of stuff that's usually trapped inside these applications that, right. that you're trying to get to all the time. Things like, did I miss a call? Yep. And uh, how many emails, how many emails, emails I did I get? And What's traffic Did I like? get outbid on eBay and the traffic? And, what stocks um, do and all that good stuff? You know, status updates from my friend. Right. And, you know, not all those situations require, should require, you know, five clicks and digging way into an app. Of a, right. Of your, you know, a lot of times, for me, the thing I use, and we've talked about this a lot, but, you know, calendar is the number one thing I use my phone for. That tile is at the top, yep. and I pull it out. Where do I go next? The conference room, you know, right. run because I'm usually late to that yes. meeting, and then, uh, and then you're off and running. So, yeah, it's very cool. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Good stuff. Nice, nice tie in. Yeah, I like That's that. Good. It's really good. Full circle. Love it. <laughs> Uh, other tie-in, which is kind of funny, I just have to mention it. Uh, so, you know, we've um, we've given out some of those little, uh, you know, mini speakers that are Windows Phone branded that are really cool that you got hooked up. And I know you've given those to several sites and other folks to hand out and all that good stuff. So brought one of those with me uh, over the holidays home. And uh, my folks were blown away. I haven't seen my mom that excited about something in ages. And I wouldn't have thought in a million years she would get excited about that. Did you that. give me she, some props for it, though? I did. Okay, no, okay. I actually said. I was like, no. I was like, you know, my buddy Brian hooked this up. And she's like, oh, is he from the podcast? And I'm like, that's him from yes. the podcast. So uh, so hey, anyway, mom. you hooked me up. And uh, mom, you've got two of those speakers on their way to the house so that you can two can enjoy uh, one permanently set up. Because they've got this, like, nice LED TV, but the speakers on it are just horrible. And it's for their kitchen, so they're off doing stuff. And so over the break, we were plugging that into that TV so that we can amplify the sound and it sounded great and so she's like she wants one for that and then I gave her one that she can take with her with her uh, upcoming Windows phone when she gets one when they when we uh, go on over to Verizon so she can have that so yeah we used it uh, back or not backpack we went on a moto, moto dirt bike motorcycle camping trip <laughs> nice. late, late in the season last year bust that out yeah <clears throat> and uh, you know campfire time and Right. Whip that out for some, you know, hip hop in the woods or whatever. Yeah, hip hop in the woods. We actually listened to some Aziz Ansari stand up. Oh, nice. 
you know, standing Very up good. in the woods. It was actually pouring rain. It was pretty miserable, but That's funny. it was awesome. That's really good. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so those things are great to hook up uh, to your Windows Phone 7. And so, you know, we, we could give some of those away. We but, should. Let's well, do it. Let's do that. But I think we should do this. I think not only should we give a couple of those away, with those, we should give them something to plug it into, I think. Don't you? You'd have a hard bargain. Come on, man. This is hard. I, we want, I want to hook them up with mm-hmm. phones. Come on. Is this good cop, bad cop? What are you doing to me? So here's what I want to do. If we're going to have a contest, I want to do a little something extra. I think that we should give not only two Windows phones out, but also a mini speaker to go with one of those. What do you think about that? I like it. He likes Just it. All it. right. He likes it. So what phone should we give out? What do you, what do you, got, what do you got over well, there? Well, we did the surround last time. We so did. Why don't we do some... Uh, why don't we do... Well, if you're on AT and T, it will be a Focus. Okay. And if it's on T Mobile, then it will be an HD Seven. I love it. So if you're on AT and T, Samsung Focus. If you're on uh, T Mobile, we'll do the HD Seven. I love that. So how would they win uh, the uh, phone and the speakers? I know we kind of randomly make up contests. What do you got? Well, we did get feedback that you know, hey, people have a life, and they are as as shocking as it is, they're not eagerly awaiting the download. Oh, right. We'll be doing a first person to do blah. Yeah, that is kind of. I know people said that they thought that was unfair to everyone. So yeah, let's not do a first person to do something. Let's do like let's give everyone like a window of what twenty four hours, or should we do two days? Let's do. uh, Let's go right in the middle. 36 hours. 36 hours. I love it. 36 days and a half. do math. Yeah. 36 hours from the time that the pot, that the podcast post on the blog is yes. live. Yes. Um, shoot a note to us either through the comments mm-hmm. on the blog or right. through Twitter okay. uh, at Brian Sites or at Skip D's. Yes. And let's say, what would... What would Skip D's be doing if he wasn't working at Microsoft on as a Zune program? Oh wow, that's gonna. Get we want we want the best answer. What the, like the best answer? Of dazzle what, us. What would I be doing if I weren't here at Microsoft as a program manager? That is really funny. I can't wait to see that. This is gonna be good. That's actually classic. Well done. Well said. So there it is. Let's recap here, boys and girls. So this is your chance to win either a uh, HD Seven on T-Mobile or a Samsung Focus on uh, AT and T. We'll also include uh, some of the cool mini speakers we were talking about for uh, for that device. Uh, should you win one? And to win, you have to, uh, within 36 hours of the podcast being posted, either comment in the blog or tweet Brian and I, or at Brian Sites or at Skip D's, and tell us, what do you think old Matt would be doing if he weren't working at Microsoft right now? And we'll pick... I've got some opinions. I bet you do. And I bet they do, too. So I'm interested to see this. This is get really embarrassing, but really awesome, too. So I'm excited about that. Well said. Mm -hmm. Well done. Very good stuff. (laughs) Cool. Love it. So do we have any questions we want to address before we wrap this bad boy up? Right. What do we got? I got one that I want to talk about. Uh, I'm going to throw one out here. We've talked about this before, but uh, Jacob C. says, Hey, guys, uh, why no shuffle in Zune, and why is Zune so restricted on Windows Phone 7 in comparison to Zune HD? Fixed in January update? Question mark. Don't know. Well, let me answer a couple of these. So there is shuffle in Zune, and I think we've talked about this before, but let me rehash this because I've actually explained this a couple times on two different podcasts, and obviously you guys aren't listening. Just kidding. Um... The uh, shuffle on Zune, you can do this a couple different ways. So if you guys jump into the uh, music and video hub, you know, the Zune hub there, and right next to music, you'll see a big giant play button there. If you click that, that's actually going to shuffle your entire music collection that's on your phone. So that's one way to do it. I actually typically hit that more often than anything. Uh, that's kind of my way to go. I'm just a big shuffle guy, personally, so uh, so I love that. So anyway, hit the big play button next to music. That's going to shuffle everything. Second thing is, let's say you've already started playing something. How do I shuffle from there? Touch the album art as you're playing, and then a whole bunch of different options are going to come up there. The repeat option, the shuffle option, um, are all there. So, and the and the ability to rate the content that you're listening to too with a heart rating as well. So, just touch the album art in the now playing view when you're actually playing something, and again, those options will will arise from there. Um, and actually, in my opinion, in my opinion, we did better than the Zoom HD on that because me, I'm typically using the transport controls, you know, next, back, play, pause more than anything else, and those other actions such as shuffle, repeat, and um, and rating are actually secondary tasks to me. So I like that we tuck them under that thing, but it's different. So if you've come from a Zune HD, that may be, be a bit confusing. So hopefully, Jacob, that helps you out. Um, as far as restricted, I assume you're talking about like social stuff and some other things like smart that, maybe DJ. smart DJ. You know, guys, you know, we totally hear that feedback. And, uh, you know, I'm not giving away roadmaps, but I'll tell you this. We've heard the feedback just like we have on copy and paste and uh, just keep your eyes peeled. That's what I got for you, Jacob C. I hope that helped. What do you got? Uh, there, you know, some folks are very hot, obviously, about the update that's coming. We yes. addressed that a little bit. It's soon. It's soon. It's coming soon. Uh, can't get too specific right now. 
due to the magic of software development. But um, but yeah, it's on the way. Right. Good goodness is happening. And a lot of what that update will do will enable the um, the phones to come to Verizon and Sprint, which we've also talked about before as well. So yes. that is in the works. Excellent. And so, yeah. Um, I like that. Yeah. So another thing I'm going to uh, call out here, Little Dictator says, yes, when will Zune on Windows Phone get a smart DJ? When will UK Zune get podcast and mix view? Darn it. Uh, he didn't say darn it. <clears throat> Um, so one thing I've heard a lot of feedback on is the lack of the international podcast marketplace. And uh, I'm taking that back to the team. I know earlier I asked you guys, send me your list of stuff that you want to see in the software. I'll guarantee that that's going to rise very quickly to the top. Um, that's something I will take back to the team. I can't give a guarantee. I can't give a timeline horizon or anything like that. But I can tell you that I'm hearing you. I understand that. And I'll do my best to uh, to make that happen for you guys. So awesome. Now, mixed view. I know that there's some metadata stuff going on with that, you know, in, in the way that, uh, you know, we talk to different databases and internationally there's different metadata. I mean, you've got AMG UK, AMG US. I mean, there's all kinds of artificial lines there that I know are no fun for customers, but uh, we'll work on that kind of stuff. How about that little dictator? Booyah. That's what I got. That's good. How about it? Some of the folks, uh, we had some folks like uh, Code Freak give us uh, the top apps he's using right now. He's using Cinetrailer, News360, and Scores. And so, do you have any apps right now, Matt, that you're that you're big into? Oh my gosh, uh, Hangover Helper is probably the funniest app on the planet. Uh, it always gets a chuckle during a demo. So, Hangover Helper does things like first pane kind of tells you. This is where you're at. This is what day it is. This is what time it is. Next one runs through your pictures you've taken last night as if you've forgotten what happened. Uh, next screen actually gives you the uh, way to auto-generate a message to uh, maybe a significant other or a boss or someone like that. And uh, you can actually has a truth switch. So you can turn the truth on or off, and it will you know automatically generate a message for you to make up an excuse as to why or why not you did or didn't do something. Um, and then after that, on the next screen, it actually goes through Twitter and pulls anything that has a hangover tag or has a hangover mention in it so that you can also revel with your friends or others that are also in that state. So it's just funny, man. It's, it's a great cool. chuckle. It's a free app. It's really well done. Great Metro UI. And uh, I love it. So a lot of fun, guys. If you're looking for an app to get a chuckle uh, doing some demos, that's it. Mr. Priesmeyer says he loves his Xbox uh, capabilities on the phone. He says, you know, gamers, earning gamer score on the, mo- on, the, on the go is a huge win. Absolutely. And, hey, Fruit Ninja, I can't forget. I got to mention Fruit Ninja. I absolutely am just addicted to Fruit Ninja right now, and uh, I've played it on other platforms. I'm not going to lie, but why is it superior on our platform? Because I get something out of it, man. I get an achievement. I get a gamer score improvement. I love that, right? Yeah. That's what I love. So go get Fruit Ninja. It's awesome. It's also the number one uh, game in the marketplace, by the way, right now. I saw that. Well done. Uh, Mastro Shane says he's loving his Windows phone. Uh, it's become the number one negotiation tool with his two kids, six and two. Fruit Ninja, Unite, and Paint for Kids rocks. So nice. For all you out there, they're looking to, looking for the virtual babysitter. Go check those apps out. And Very cool. Get a little bit of quiet time. That's totally funny. Uh, JRO 2020's got one. He says, uh, any plans to add Bluetooth keyboard support? Also, why no Bluetooth audio for video? Seriously. Uh, don't know about the Bluetooth keyboard support. I think that's interesting. Uh, I'm not sure if, how the Bluetooth protocol works in that manner, uh, to be honest with you, but we can definitely take that feedback to the team. Uh, now, Bluetooth audio for video. Now, I'm not sure that the Bluetooth... Uh, the way that that technology is set up, I don't know that it would work. And maybe that's something we just didn't do. I have no idea. I mean, me personally, I've been, you know, I've talked about it about 20 times here and other places that my favorite moment on the phone is when I get into my car and the audio just kicks on from my Bluetooth audio in my car. That works perfect. I was not aware that that audio would not work for video. Now, I know, obviously, Bluetooth video isn't going to happen and, you know, that's not working. But I think what he's asking for is that, well, why can't I just hear the audio from a video if I play it uh, over Bluetooth? And that may be not a limitation of the the phone, but actually the uh, Bluetooth receiver that you're working on too. So I would look at that as well, because I know my car in particular will only hone in on the audio portion of the phone that's meant to do that. So it could be something that we have an oversight on, could be the uh, actual instrument you're trying to use Bluetooth on. But in any case, Bluetooth audio is cool. So hopefully that answered your question, dude. Probably didn't. Agreed. Here's one for you. Prepaid burrito. Yes. What are the existing options for backing up the phone, data, settings, etc.? So on photos and notes and stuff, that stuff is all backed up to your SkyDrive account automatically it if is. you want it to. It is. But what about settings and is that ever backed up at all, either through... I don't know. I don't, or... I don't know that it is right now. Now, one thing I do know, uh, a couple things. So first thing is, anytime you connect to the Zoom software, we will automatically back up a physical copy of the photos and videos you've taken on your phone. So that's going to happen automatically for you unless you go turn that off, mm-hmm. uh, which you can if you wish. I don't know why you would because you got lots of storage on that computer. May as well back it up. Uh, second part, 
part is that any time that we uh, prepare to do an update, which you guys you know will see soon, we will make a uh, backup of your phone, the entire phone, everything on it, settings, all of that, such that one, if something were to go wrong, we can roll you back into the perfect state that you were in before, and two, that after the update, your phone is working in the same exact condition that it was before you had the update. Now. That's a really cool thing. And I know that sounds like, well, sure it should. But, you know, in the past, I've had phones where if you updated it, that phone was blanked when you were done. You had to start all over again with everything. And if you didn't have your stuff backed up, tough, right? Whereas we've made that a really awesome experience. And not only is it a really easy experience to update your phone, which is a one-click, yes, go do this, but we do provide that backup uh, capability. And once we do have that backup, software will actually allow you to go back to a restore point later if you want to. So you can restore back. So if something, you know, happens with your phone, you install, you know, some some bad app happens, I don't know, whatever, you know, something, your phone basically gets corrupted, you would have the ability to go back and restore that phone to the point when the last time you backed it up. So that's kind of nice. We do have a pretty good backup and restore story as far as that goes. Uh, but other than that, most of your stuff will be uploaded to the cloud. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. we, Eric Coleman, he's, he was wondering when we were going to get back to work. So Whoa. it's kind of harshing on you a little bit. Wow. Mm. We're back. We're back. Though I don't know how much work I've been Begrudgingly. doing. Begrudgingly. Begrudgingly. Yes. Yes, indeed. Indeed. So, yeah, I think that's it for the for the most part for the questions. Yeah, same here. But uh, but again, you know what, guys? Thanks so much for listening. You know, we, we really appreciate it. Really appreciate your support. It's uh, it's just great to be able to reach out uh, to you guys and have you guys reach out to us. And again, I invite you to uh, send me all your thoughts, rants, raves, uh, wish list stuff to me at askzoon.microsoft.com. Or excuse me, askzoon at microsoft.com uh, around the PC software stuff. Love to uh, get all your thoughts on that and see what I can do to make it a better experience also don't forget about the contest now an hd7 or a focus and many speakers to go with the phone tell me what you think i would be doing if i weren't working at microsoft that's really funny dude you can either answer that in the, answer that in a comment on the blog post or via twitter and you got to do it within 36 hours of posting of the podcast and with that i'm matt and i'm brian until next time later <laughs>